Thank you, Madam Chair. And Madam Chair, I want to congratulate you. I think you're going to do a first-rate job uh, chairing the committee, and I think the uh, Landrew Murkowski team colleagues, all of us are going to be well served by having the two of them uh, lead us. Colleagues, in my view, yesterday's decision to approve the Jordan Cove facility in my home state reinforces my view that there is a sensible place between no energy exports and approving every application on offer. Now, a year ago in this room, that was called finding a sweet spot where you factored in the needs of our manufacturers and our consumers and environmental questions and national security. And my view is there still is a sweet spot recognizing that the geopolitical and national security considerations have certainly changed in the last year. Now, yesterday's decision with respect to Jordan Cove shows the kind of considerations that need to go into this mix. For example, Jordan Cove is the only West Coast facility that uh, is now on track for approval for exports. And also, there will be less impact on American gas supply, which is going to be important to our consumers. Senator Stabenow and others have made this point because a portion of the gas for Jordan Cove will come from Canada. It's not going to uh, be uh, American supply. So let me, in light of that, kind of pick up on what Senator Murkowski was talking about with respect to the uh, situation in Eastern Europe. And in looking at the range of events surrounding the Ukraine, I was struck by how the mention of potentially significant shale formations is coming up more often with respect to Eastern European countries, Poland, and I'm sure there's going to be discussion of it in Lithuania. Now, everything I have learned, and you touched on this, Mr. Chow, is that it's going to take a lot of money and it's going to take a lot of time to build an LNG terminal. I mean, we're talking about years. We're not talking about months. We're talking about years to build one. So my question, and perhaps for you, Mr. Goldwyn, and you, Mr. Chow, wouldn't it be faster to export more of our knowledge more quickly to these countries in terms of how we can help get them help them shake free of Russian oil and gas. Wouldn't that be the fastest way to move in a manner that really would help them shake free of uh, Russian oil and gas? And I think I really heard you touch on this, Mr. Chow. Maybe you can amplify it. Maybe we we'll start with you, Mr. Chow and Mr. Mr. Goldwyn, because exporting our knowledge could really make a difference quickly. And I compare that to the years that it would take for a terminal and the expense. Mr. Chow first. Uh, thank you, Senator. Uh, it's not just shale gas. Actually, you can increase conventional gas production faster in Ukraine. You don't have to wait for shale gas. And it's not only knowledge, but also, of course, investment, uh, as well as managerial expertise. But before you can do that, Ukraine needs to clean up its act. Uh, in terms of its energy sector. Uh, today, uh, Ukraine imports gas from Russia of around $300 per 1,000 cubic meters, uh, may go up to 400 by April 1st. Uh, it pr provides $40 per 1,000 cubic meter for the same gas for, to domestic production. So it disincentivizes uh, uh, domestic production, all that needs to change. The reason it's there, and it's not an accident, as they say in that part of the world, is because it facilitates corruption. For 20 years, uh, the Ukrainian energy sector had been hampered by corruption from the very, very top. So if we do anything at all, we should condition our aid that we're considering uh, uh, giving Ukraine for both the IMF and other Western donors on fundamental structural reform of the energy sector. I heard you touch on this too, Mr. Goldwyn, in terms of what we could do in addition to what we're doing now to help these countries shake free of Russian oil and gas. Your comments. 
Great. Thank you, Senator Wyden, and thank you for your leadership on this issue. I think we need to do both. There's no question that providing technical assistance to countries like Ukraine, but also Romania, Bulgaria, Poland, Lithuania, which has shales also, will help them develop those over time. But Europe actually has a number of existing LNG importing terminals that have not used their maximum capacity. In fact, Spain is kind of an island to the rest of Europe. So that's why I think the, the process of interconnection uh, and creating a unified gas market will enable countries like Ukraine to get gas from LNG imports before they need to build new terminals. You can do a lot with interconnection and more pipelines, reverse flows into, into places like Ukraine. So I think they need to do both, and I think the time scale for getting more LNG into Central and Eastern Europe can happen much more quickly than the time it takes to build a new import facility. And the, the floating facility... My, my, my time well. is up, but I'm very interested in the speed question because it is fine to talk about this in the abstract. If you could get that to the chair and the ranking minority member so it could be shared uh, with, with all of us. For me, the question is speed. Thank you, Madam Chair.